we got a chance to speak to the producer of Disney's 100th anniversary animated feature, Wish. Check out our conversation with Juan Pablo Reyes, Lancaster Jones. Uh, if you would allow me to put on my critic scat for a second, it took me about 10 minutes to figure out what Wish is. I was a little unsure as to where you were going. And then as mm-hmm. soon as it clicked in my head that this was clearly a movie for Disney fans, I was all in. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Was that the guiding principle from day one? What Did you guys set out to go, hey, let's make a movie. It's Disney 100. Let's make a movie for the fans, by the fans. Well, it is definitely made by the fa- fans because we all at Disney Animation were very passionate about Disney and what it is. And uh, and it is for, I think it's for the big Disney fans, but it's just for the world in general because we want, like this movie, when we're looking at what it should be, it brought in, it, it was the idea of bringing in these feelings that a Disney movie conveys when you watch it, you know? So like all of those things are intrinsical Disney, but they're also very human. So uh, that's kind of where we started. We started to analyze the Disney DNA and what do these Disney movies make you feel? And then we started to build the movie from there. So uh, so it's it's nice to hear that it's definitely coming through, you know? Oh, it's totally coming through. I, 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 I want to ask you about that in a second. But but let's talk animation for a bit. One of the things I enjoyed most uh, was the animation style, which looks and feels different from what you guys usually do. And, and it comes at an interesting time because, you know, Sony's doing some crazy stuff with Spider-Verse and uh, DreamWorks is kind of experimenting with their Puss in Boots look. And so it was really cool to see Wish take on this 3D hand-drawn watercolor thing, which felt unique. And could you talk to me about that decision process? Yeah, no, of course. So it was all driven by story. You know, when we, again, going back to what you were saying about making a movie, it's this movie, the it was conceived as this idea of a movie that would come out in 2023, which celebrates the 100th anniversary of Disney animation. So thematically, we were looking at quintessential Disney, but we were doing that stylistically as well. Tell me this. Um, once you guys have once you guys have written a movie, um, yeah. and then you get in those voice actors, and I was wondering how much changes between what you have on a page, and then you know when Chris Pine and Ariana DeBose come in, and they've got such vibrant personalities themselves. Like, what happens at that meeting point? Well, I, I you you're hitting it, you know, because our 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 script is not locked for a really long time. Our script is an ever flowing document, really. We're like, but then when we start to bring in the voice actors, they make that their own. Sometimes they ad lib, but a lot of the times they stay true to the words that Allison and Jen uh, wrote, but their performance and their acting then inspires the writers again. It's full of synergy, the way that they work. And animation is the same, you know? Like, the design of the characters is done way before we cast, but then once you bring in the actors, the animators are inspired by their movements and and their gesticulations in their face and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Juan Pablo, every time I speak to people from Disney, I always ask, um, and I'm not sure if you have an answer to this one, but do you have a favorite Disney cartoon? (laughs) <laughs> well, I have several and and you yeah, it's like you're just really I'll hard. narrow it down, right? We'll do classic Disney as opposed to the Pixar stuff because you know, that complicates things. So, classic Disney. <laughs> Well, I from yeah, I, I I would always go to our uh our Disney Animation 62 classics now with this one. Uh the two that are always really close to my heart are the two beauties, Sleeping Beauty and Beauty and the Beast. Sleeping Beauty, I grew up watching with my mom and the three good fairies are some of my favorite characters. Uh, and then Beauty and the Beast was my first memory in the movie theater. And, uh, and I just cherish it a lot. Perfect. Uh, Juan Pablo, this has been an absolute pleasure. Um, thank yeah. you so much for all the work you do. Thank you so much for Wish. And uh, yeah, congratulations on the movie. Also, I enjoy speaking to people who have names as long as mine. So that's really fantastic. <laughs> I am definitely very <laughs> proud of my long name. I do want to leave you with the idea to encourage everyone to go watch this movie in theaters. It's going to be exclusively in theaters for a very long period of time. Uh, it won't be hitting platforms anytime soon. Fantastic. Uh, 
And uh, a big part of it is because of the visual and the aspect ratio, you know, being Cinemascope like Sleeping Beauty. And of yeah. course, just the idea of going and celebrating uh, together uh, a musical comedy. M more, more of those, please. More theatrical exclusives. We love them. Absolutely. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you so much. Okay, ladies. Your wings can fly, but your voices can. <laughs> Disney's Wish is now showing in Malaysian cinemas. Check it out. Let us know what you think. Sound off in the comments. And thank you so much for watching.